so one of the one of the actually positive things that came out of the uh, aftermath of the 2000 election, uh, there was a number of them, uh, but one of the one of the positive things is that there was a lot more attention focused um, on voters with disabilities. Um, and a couple of policy changes that were made, at, again, at the federal and state level, uh, one of which that required a couple of things. One, that every polling location be accessible to persons uh, with disabilities, uh, and also that they have a piece of voting equipment that would allow an individual uh, with a disability uh, to vote independently and privately. Uh, and the, the equipment that we use currently here in Scammy County is called an Automark. It's actually not a voting machine, it is a ballot marking device. Uh, and what it is, is if you can imagine uh, a touch screen device similar to a, a, an iPad or a, um, you know, a touchpad computer, uh, but it's a, it, it, you have a, a mark sense ballot, or what we call a mark sense ballot, it's, a, it's like a Scantron ballot that every, every voter is issued when they go to vote in person. Uh, and that, that ballot is fed into the auto mark and then it, uh, it has a, either a visual or an audio display and that's the neat thing for persons with, uh, that are blind or, or have trouble seeing. Uh, you actually have an audio capability where you have headphones uh, and then there's uh, audio, audible commands along with um, uh, different interface devices that allow an individual uh, to make their selections without actually having to, to visually read uh, the screen. Um, and then once the, that process is completed on uh, the, uh, the touch screen, the ballot is actually marked by the auto mark uh, and then it is returned back to the voter and then that voter would then take that ballot uh, and go to uh, the uh, scanner and have that ballot scanned just like everybody else's ballot uh, is scanned. In addition, uh, every voter has the ability to have assistance uh, when they go to vote. Uh, it can be done in one of two ways. A person can bring somebody with them. There's a couple of limitations on there, but for the most part, uh, a voter can bring whomever they want to help them uh, uh, vote their ballot. If that happens, when that happens, the individual, if they hadn't already told us that they needed assistance, would have to, to, to fill out a very simple um, form that says that they are indeed requesting assistance. And then if it's somebody that they brought with them or somebody that they selected to have them assist, that individual then also fills out a form. It's called a declaration to provide assistance. And so we know who that individual uh, is and that, that the voter themselves does indeed want that assistance. Now, if a voter comes to the polling location alone uh, and uh, requires assistance or requests assistance, then that can be provided by poll workers, the people that work at the polling place on election or early voting site. Um, uh, during the election. And what w the policy that we have, and then that's written into the state law, is that two poll workers would assist that individual, uh, and they can't be of the same political party, so you, you can't have two Democrats or two Republicans or two Libertarians. Uh, you would have a person, two persons with, with differing party affiliations or a person with no party affiliation along with a, you know, somebody with a party affiliation that would go assist that voter with whatever assistance they need in completing that ballot. It could be reading that ballot to the voter and then having that voter mark it. It could be marking uh, the ballot uh, with the voter's input for them. Uh, whatever assistance that that, uh, that voter uh, requests uh, can be done. So uh, those individuals can either vote independently and privately if they choose to do it that way uh, or can provide assistance. And then finally, uh, again, like uh, all voters, those individuals would have the opportunity to vote um, an absentee ballot uh, in the comfort of their of their home, uh, and that's that's available to all voters. So, you, when you register to vote, you're assigned a precinct, and that precinct includes a polling place address. So, in other words, a precinct is a geographic boundary, and then the polling place is where an individual who is registered to vote within that geographic area goes to vote on election day to cast their ballot. That's sort of the old school way that elections have been run for you know uh, more than a century and that is you, you have a defined polling uh, precinct area and then within that you have a defined uh, polling place that you would go to on a given election day. Now that process has evolved over the years particularly here in the state of Florida so now we have three distinct ways to cast a ballot to, to vote in, in, in most elections that are held here in the state. 
Uh, the first method, the first that's available from a calendar standpoint, is voting by mail. And it used to be called absentee voting, and actually the Florida legislature changed the statute. And now uh, it's no longer referred to as absentee voting because it's, it's now vote by mail. Uh, because you don't have to be absent uh, in order to vote by mail. Any voter, any registered voter in the state uh, can request uh, to vote by absentee ballot or vote by mail ballot, uh, and they don't have to provide any sort of reason or rationale for that at all. It just, if they wish to choose, if they choose to vote that way, then they, they, can, they can do that. Uh, so that's, that's option number one. Um, and then option number two uh, is early in-person voting. And this, is, this was the, the most recent development um, of the three different uh, ways to vote. Um, and basically, each county would have early voting, has early voting locations. A minimum of one, because uh, you have to have one in your, in your, in your main office of supervisor of elections. Uh, and there really is no maximum. Uh, there's defined uh, in statute the types of places you can use uh, to as an early voting location, and there's some parameters about when um, early voting has to take place, and then you have some optional additional days that w that we as supervisors of elections can elect to to to, to uh, conduct early in-person voting. Now, the neat thing about the great thing about early in-person voting, uh, which is different than election day voting, which I'll get to in a second is that you can choose any one of the early voting locations. For instance, uh, in the uh, last uh, general election we had here in Escambia County, we had seven early voting locations. So if you lived in Cantonment, uh, but happened to be in downtown Pensacola, uh, for whatever reason, you could have come into our office and used uh, our early voting location or the public library up the road. Uh, if you happened to be a student at the University uh, at Pensacola State, um, and you were going to class, then you could have popped over to uh, the genealogy branch library uh, and cast a ballot there. So it doesn't matter, you can go to any one of those uh, early voting locations um, to cast your ballot because we have the ability and the technology uh, to not only be able to find your registration uh, at any one of those uh, seven sites because we have uh, electronic poll books, but also to be able to produce your specific ballot style. Each precinct has at least one unique ballot style, and in a primary election, uh, at least three unique ballot styles. And so, if you showed up at a, at a, a if you're registered to vote in East Pensacola Heights, and you showed up in Century, uh, or excuse me, in, in Molino, to uh, at their early voting site, we would have to be able to, to to have your specific ballot style ready, and we can do that with technology. We do that with technology called ballot on demand. Uh, now, shift that forward to Election Day voting. In Election Day, you do have to go to your assigned polling place um, that's within your, the, 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 the precinct boundary uh, that's your, where your legal residential address is. And this is kind of a, of a holdover from, from years past. I think, uh, again, I don't know this for certain, but my limited research that I've done on this issue uh, it seems to be for a couple of different reasons. One, I think, um, you know, sort of in years past, it was sort of a neighborhood thing, and the poll workers there knew the voters um, because they would show up election after election and know that you know Jane Smith comes in to, to vote. They know who Jane Smith is and know that it's someone that's not Jane Smith and allow them to vote. But perhaps more importantly is that in the days before electronic precinct registers, you'd have to have a list of all the people that are registered to vote to know that they were eligible to vote in your particular, uh, in your particular precinct and polling location. Uh, with over 200,000 registered voters in Scambia County, um, that's broken down into 79 different different precincts. And so, if you show up at your your precinct, you're on the list there, uh, if you will, at that particular precinct. And so, you can check in there, and they would be able to provide you your specific ballot style. Um, so that's the biggest difference between early in-person voting, where you can go anywhere, uh, and then election day voting, uh, which uh, you can you have to go to your assigned precinct. Now, there is sort of a hybrid model that's used in other states, particularly uh, Colorado was kind of where it got its start, called election centers, and sort of they take the two and mash them together. Uh, and instead of having, seven, in our case, instead of having 79 different polling locations open on election day and just seven uh, early voting locations, you'd have some number in between uh, that would be open during early voting but also extend on into uh, election day. And then you would have the advantage of being to go, being able to go to any one of those uh, locations on election day. Uh, that would take some pretty significant re reform of the of the process as it stands right now. 
Uh, I don't think that's imminent, but that's something that's, that has been discussed and probably will continue to be discussed moving forward. Uh, so I'm, I'm often asked somewhat jokingly, you know, what do you all do when in the 360 plus days that you're not actually conducting an election? Um, well, most of the time is spent, uh, most of our time and effort year-round is spent through voter registration, voter outreach, and maintaining our voter database. Uh, again, with 200,000 registered voters and people moving in and out of the state and between counties every day, uh, that's a, that's a full-time job. We also do a lot of voter outreach uh, where we will go into the schools, uh, go into community events, register people to vote, uh, talk about uh, the importance of uh, of, of registering and participating in elections and how one does that, the history of elections, uh, etc. Uh, we do candidate qualifying. In this election cycle, uh, we had more than 60 candidates that filed uh, that we had to qualify for office uh, here locally. We also do, uh, we've got to maintain our voting equipment. Um, we have a voting equipment warehouse. Uh, we have you know, several hundred pieces of uh, highly valuable, expensive pieces of equipment uh, that need uh, constant attention, uh, testing, uh, maintenance, uh, et cetera. Uh, we also do financial disclosure forms for all local officials that are required uh, to file those. They file those uh, forms with us. We're the liaison between the Ethics Commission uh, in Tallahassee and these, uh, and these candidates. Um, and that's just a, kind of a, a smattering, but uh, we, we do stay busy, uh, even though we've uh, reduced the size of our staff uh, since the, the time that I've come on board. Uh, the, we, we do stay very busy doing uh, election-related and registration-related work uh, year-round, but certainly uh, when we're faced with a, uh, a county-wide election, statewide election, uh, the tempo uh, really increases uh, quite a bit.